Hello, I am officially in Germany. As a recap, I am a PhD student uh, in microbial ecology and marine biogeochemistry, and I'm about to go on a two-month research cruise to the Amazon plume, so this is my packing must-haves for the trip. The first thing, a little waterproof bag. This I have found to be really nice for holding all of my little electronics. So this is cords. Um, in this case, I have a little camera that I bring, kind of like a GoPro. So I have all of my electronic things in this bag. I also take this on a lot of other hiking, kayaking, etc. adventures, but it's waterproof and it keeps everything in one small baggie. I also have, I mean, it really doesn't, doesn't matter, but some sort of bag like this that I put all of my random items in. So the first one being, if you wear glasses like I do, <laughs> then this is really nice because I will put my sunglasses on here and my seeing glasses here. <laughs> and when I am out on the deck, it's really easy for me to take my glasses off and put my sunglasses on really fast um, and vice versa. Now, if you're lucky, you have prescription sunglasses, but I have not invested the money in that poor grad student. So I have these. Another essential, a watch. Really important. You might not think of it otherwise if you're not a watch wearer. <laughs> But this is great because some boats, you're in your own bubble for a really long time and they don't have clocks nearby. And oftentimes you have shifts or you uh, need to be on deck at a certain time. And just having a simple watch is great. Other two things that I always take. Number one, a USB drive. It doesn't really matter what kind. Um, I ended up buying this one because it's waterproof and it's a weird one. You would not think of it. I, I definitely didn't think of it until I got on the ship. A lot of times researchers are working on different computers or on the vessel there are computers that are older that are hooked up to uh, the main database. Also research cruises will usually build one folder where they put everything. So presentations, raw data for different things they've collected. And at the end of the cruise, you can make a copy of that folder to take with you. So sometimes that isn't needed, but it's really nice to have just in case. Another thing that I always take is um, some sort of a simple pocket knife. Obviously, this depends on if you can take it. Um, in this scenario, it, it, has, it works out well because I just put, put it in my check bag. The first day you get on the ship, you're doing a lot of unpacking, unwrapping, uh, cutting, etc. And it's great to have some form of a uh, knife near you just for opening boxes and getting your gear all set up. But again, that kind of depends. Another thing that I have found to be an essential, obviously depending on your computer, etc., is an adapter. So this one hooks up to my laptop and iPad, and it has different, uh, so it has USB, it has the SD, um, HDMI, so this is wonderful if you're giving presentations, for example, or if you need to hook up to a computer that has an HDMI port, um, and that one goes in my electronics bag. Okay, so for the actual flying part, this is something that I have started doing based off of a horror story. Uh, from my PI. So my PI told me once that when she went on a research cruise, she took her belongings, her bags, and she put all of her clothes in her checked bag. And when she arrived at the location, they had lost her checked bag. So she had lost all of her clothes and all of her toiletries, everything. Thankfully, she had a day at port uh, before leaving, so she ran to Walmart, is what she told me, and got clothes that she could take on the trip. Since then, I have started doing something, 
I have a small bag here that has an extra set of clothing that has two days of clothing in it. Um, this is an extra shirt, underwear, socks. I put a small deodorant and toothbrush. And I also put in uh, a couple protein bars. This might be overkill and it probably is. I think in most scenarios it will be. But in the scenario where my clothing and toiletries, etc., is lost, I want to make sure that I have a couple days backup, just in case. The other thing too is for certain trips like this one, I was flying for over a day. And so when I arrived in Germany after my nine hour flight, I changed my clothes and brushed my teeth and that that made me feel a little more refreshed. So that's something that I appreciate. Okay, honing down onto the last two items. The first one, another bag. If you can't tell, I like bags. <laughs> but I like having designated bags. <laughs> that in itself, I guess, is a point to make because when you're in your room, you don't have that big of a room, but you'll usually have like a cubby of some sort, either in your closet or up near your head for your bed. And what I do is I put these items, you know, in a row like this and I have them open. That way nothing gets mixed up and when the boat moves, etc., everything still stays here. So it's, I guess, another way of dummy proofing. Anyway, this bag. This is my cruise bag. Items in this cruise bag. I have some, just some cold medicine. I oftentimes find that when I don't sleep, I start to get sick really easily. And obviously the last thing you want when you're on a boat for two months is to get a cold because you need to be working. <laughs> And so I have some cold medicine just in case I start feeling bad. A nice good old chapstick because that's rough over two months without any chapstick. I have my best friend Dramamine. I have less drowsy Dramamine and drowsy Dramamine. <laughs> that is mainly because sometimes I want to be awake and I wanna be able to work. And in that case, I'll do the less drowsy. Um, so if my seasickness isn't as abrupt, I will do less drowsy. Sometimes the seasickness is really bad if there's a bad storm. And in that case, I want to be asleep. So I bring both. Silica beads uh, or some form of moisture absorber. So these ones are the classic packs that you see in packages that you get or clothes or, or whatever. I discovered in one of my cruises in the Gulf of Mexico that everything stays very moist in certain regions, <laughs> obviously. And uh, when you're working a lot and you're working in moist areas, your clothes tend to stay damp for a really long time and this pro is prolonged in travel, etc. And so I have purchased a bag of these um, three years ago now, and I use the same ones. Uh, they're starting to, the blue, well, you can't see. The blue ones uh, indicate ones that, that are no longer good. They've been absorbed. Anyway, they're still lasting me a while. So I put one in my check bag, I put a couple in my carry-on, a couple in my room near my clothes, just to absorb some moisture. Okay, another thing, <laughs> my best friends, <laughs> earplugs. Oftentimes you will have a roommate on the ship and sometimes you are on different schedules or maybe you even just like going to sleep and waking up at different times. Also, the boat can oftentimes be really loud if the waves are crashing up against your porthole or just the wall, then it's pretty noisy. So this 
comes in handy. These are really nice to have. So the last thing that I'm going to show for this bag are these little balls. So these are just uh, like fabric softeners inside of these little balls. And these, these are really nice. It's there again, I bought them cheap a couple years ago and I'm using the same ones and I think they're gonna last me for a long time. It's kind of a, a spoiled purchase, but I really like them. Why do I have them? They all have work boots, um, which are steel toed shoes. And mine, for example, lace up um, and go above my ankle. So everything is just kind of stuck in there. <laughs> and when you're sampling seawater on deck, you will no doubt get seawater in your shoes at some point. If you've ever put on a wetsuit and that you didn't clean or anything like that, uh, you may know that it gets extremely stinky seawater over time. And seawater plus some good old foot sweat <laughs> results in really stinky, stinky shoes. So returning back to this, you usually have a roommate. You also have a small room with this roommate. And so if your shoes stink, your room stinks. So I put one of these in each shoe and I haven't had any complaints so far. We'll see, we'll see. <laughs> okay, the last thing that I will talk about today, uh, excuse my dirty shoes, are shoes, more specifically flip-flops. The reason that I'm pointing these out is because when you plan a research cruise, everybody will tell you only pack shoes that are closed-toed because when you're walking around the ship, you have to have closed-toed shoes, which makes sense because you're working in a lab. So the same rule applies. <laughs> these I pack for two reasons. One being that you're walking around a lot. And if you are like me and you have wide feet, your feet get really tired. And every now and then it is very relieving to let your feet be free. <laughs> I will sometimes wear these going to breakfast, for example. The other and more important reason is for the showers. Most boats are wonderful and clean and it's not really a concern, it's more of a paranoia to wear shoes in the shower, but other boats, you really should be wearing shoes in the shower. You also have some boats where you have five people in using the same bathroom, and sometimes you have your own bathroom. So if you're sharing the shower with a lot of people over a long period of time, it's nice to have something, some form of comfort to know that you are clean. Again, that's something that is up to your discretion um, and your comfort level, but it's something that I realized after not bringing them on one trip and I wish I had. That wraps up my essentials. I apologize that this is a long essentials, but uh, those are my essentials for going on a research cruise. I am in quarantine right now. I'll do another packing for more sciency stuff and then in a couple days, at the end of quarantine, I will be heading to Spain. I will be in touch.